Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Pete, this is Pete's Carport. This is my 63 Austin Healy that I did quite a few videos on and we did some really fun stuff to this engine. Now, unfortunately, this project got pushed off to the side when I found out I had issues with the brakes and a bunch of other things that I just had to tidy up. Uh, it was the middle of the summer when all that happened here in Florida. It's just storms and heat. So I put it away. Now, it's a year later, we're back to storms and heat. I wanted to start it up. Now I did put fuel stabilizer before putting it away, but I'm not even sure if it had gas. So I wanna go ahead and try to add some gas to this tank. And um, it looks like the filter, I have a clear filter, which everybody yells at me for having, one of those glass filters up front. And it just looks like it's extremely dirty. So we're gonna jump up front here in a second and uh, see if we can get this thing started. Cause I love this car, I think this thing's awesome. And then we'll jump into doing some things to this. But let's get started guys, I'm gonna fill this up. Like I said, put a couple gallons of gas into there. That should be enough right there. It's about two total that I put in. Get our gas cap back on there. And let's move on up front. Now it's nice and dark over here, so hopefully we can catch all this. And uh, if you haven't seen other videos I've done, we basically rebuilt the top end of this with a uh, performance head on. And let's go ahead and see if we can get it started up. Now I need to rig some of these wires up because the starter wire came loose from the main positive here. So I'm just gonna kind of rig it up a little bit. Hopefully that works. Let me see if I get a little more fuel coming through that filter. As you can see, that filter might just be shot. Let's give it a second here and see if we can get some fuel to fill it up. I might just need to change that thing out. That might be clogged, but let me try. Might as well, and then we'll go ahead and swap that fuel filter out, see if we can get a little better fuel flow. I'll pop it all off and make sure we are getting fuel. Oh, oh, that actually, our starter is sparking over here nice. than I got when I was first trying, so let's see. She might start. Well, we got some rain going on, but I went down and picked up some new filters that we can replace in here. And I also checked the uh, fuel pressure because I do have a gauge and I completely forgot about it. It's been a while since I've done anything on this car, but let me go ahead and kick that fuel pump on so you guys can see here. If you look at that gauge, we are getting pressure, but I think this thing is completely clogged up. So what we're gonna do is crack open this here and we'll replace that filter. You can see how dirty it is. And hopefully that gives us enough pressure, enough fuel getting to the carburetor to get it started. Hopefully we don't have to do any adjustments on the carburetor, it has sat. Uh, but like I said, I added um, the stabilizer to the fuel before storing it. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that worked. And we can get this thing started, pull this thing out, clean her up, and just take a better look at her and what we need to do. I'm excited about getting this car running before uh, the good season for Florida comes, which is, you know, your fall, winter. These cars are real fun to drive around. So let's get set up and do that. Yeah, that is disgusting. Ugh. Oh, it smells so bad. Oh, look how nasty that is, guys. Ugh. <laughs> I'm gonna clean this whole thing out real good and go ahead and swap out the, the gaskets and filter. Ooh, look at that, that is disgusting. All right, let's go ahead and hook the fuel pump back up. Make sure we don't have any leaks. But we're getting fuel, looks like we're getting fuel right through. Check the pressure. 
All right, we're looking good. Let's go ahead and try to start this now. All right, guys, it's a new day. I went and picked up some starter fluid, and a uh, good thing is our gas is looking nice and clean through the filter. Charge the battery up. Let's see if we can get this thing started. Now, I would love to pull this thing out there, but we are getting massive storms every day. So if we can get this out of the way, you know, hopefully in a couple of weeks, we, our weather gets better and we can pull this thing out, clean it up really nice, and maybe take this thing on a few rides. So let's see if we can at least get it fired up here. Hopefully we don't have to do any type of rebuilding on the carburetor. Go ahead and give it a little gas here. Just spray some starter fluid into there. Well guys, I'm not happy at all with the way that, that Weber carburetor is reacting and um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off. It probably needs to be looked over, possibly rebuilt. I don't know a whole lot about those carburetors or actually carburetors in general. It's been a very long time since I've done anything with carburetors. And from what I've seen online, these are very difficult carburetors to work with. And I kind of knew that going into it, but I was hoping I'd find a lot more information online. I just can't seem to find anything relating to what I need to do to get this thing tuned in. So with that said, I really want to drive this car. And I was digging through my stuff and I found my old SU carburetors that were working perfect when we pulled them off. And I have a whole bunch of gaskets, all sorts of stuff. So what I want to do is throw this back on the car. It probably needs to be rebuilt, but there's tons of information on rebuilding this, tuning these, and they're a heck of a lot easier to tune up from what I see. So what I'm going to do next, we're going to pull the car out. We're going to go ahead and try to connect this up, see if it starts up, because when I pulled this, like I said, it was running great. So these carburetors, I don't think they were rebuilt or anything. They do probably have a couple of leaks, but at least I'll kind of be able to gauge uh, how these are going to run on the setup that we have with that said let's try to pull this car out a little bit we have a nice day of weather today let's pull that weber carb off let's try to get this carb on there because we have our manifold and everything still connected and uh, see if we can get it to start up and if it starts up then we'll move forward from there probably rebuild these carbs on the next video pretty excited i want to see, want to see if we can get this thing running and at least running good enough to take it for a drive very soon So guys, finally got the Sprite pulled out. And what I wanna do is make sure we're getting fuel into our float bowl right here. This seems loose and I don't think that's supposed to be that way, but we are gonna be rebuilding these entire carbs. I'm just concerned maybe gas isn't getting into there, float stuck, something like that. Uh, and then second, I don't even know if we're getting spark. So I did pick up some spark plugs. Let's just dive into it. Let's see where we can go with this. I think we can easily get this thing started. Oh, and I had to pick up another battery because I killed that one. So. Hopefully we don't have to crank it too many times and we can get her to turn over because she was starting really well uh, prior to putting her away. And that was about six months ago, I think I started it up. So uh, our fuel filter you can see here is nice and clean. We've got some fresh fuel just flowing right through it. Dirt on the outside of it, but inside there you can see it's a very clean fuel coming through now. So let's see if we can get this thing going. We got fuel in there. Float seems to be working now. It's pretty dirty in there. Let's go check the other side. And we got fuel over here.
Seems to be functioning good. All right, so I got some new spark plugs and we got this spark plug uh, tester here. So I wanna see if we're getting spark to our spark plugs. And also I wanna go ahead and change out our spark plugs while we're here, because it's been a while since we've done that. So let's go ahead and get that done. Oh yeah, that's pretty black. That's kind of what I expected. It's definitely running rich, as you can see there. It's very, very black, so it's covered in a lot of carbon there. I'm guessing they're all gonna kind of be that way, so let's go ahead and take the rest out, put our new ones in. A new battery going in. Let's go ahead and hook up our spark tester. Make sure we're at least getting spark to the spark plugs. Now that we got our new spark plugs in. All right, we're getting sparked to the first one. All right, so I tried to crank it over. I'm getting a popping noise, so I think our ignition is actually off. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back a little bit. Let's see what we get. Go ahead and choke it. Well guys, I could not be happier and I hope you guys enjoyed this video because this has been so much fun for me, uh, just diagnosing an old engine like this. And I'm gonna tell you, I know almost nothing about these cars. Now I tinkered around with cars my whole life and kind of learned as I went. And I'm gonna tell you, YouTube has changed the game for me. All the stuff that I was trying to figure out on this car, I found off of a couple of channels, some really good information out there. And I'm so excited to pull this SU carb off and rebuild because I think this is gonna be a much better application than the Weber. Although the Weber is really what I wanted to do because I wanted to have a race oriented car and I still plan on getting this thing rebuilt. I just know nothing about them, can't find much information about them. And they just seem very difficult to set up based on what everybody's saying. These SU carbs, seemed very simple in fact i went ahead and even adjusted the idle and it was so simple and it just idled right down right now it's running really really good but i'm not going to start it back up because we're getting fuel leaking down the side here so really it's just a gasket kit rebuild on this i believe because everything seems to be running great on it and of course we're going to clean it up make it look really nice and i'm excited we've got a ton of things to do on this unfortunately uh, when it sat, we ended up getting a leak in the rear brakes and that drained out. It used to be a brand new brake and clutch master cylinder. And unfortunately, when your brake line breaks or your clutch has a leak in it, you'll lose both of them. So I might want to go with two reservoirs. That would be the safer way of doing it in case you lose your clutch, you don't lose your brakes. But for right now, I just want to get it up and running so I can take it around the block. And I've got a lot of other things to do. These wires are a complete mess. When I got the car, there was a small fire uh, with the wire loom and it basically sees all the wires together. So I'm bypassing most of those wires right now. And that's what's making it difficult to even drive around. So we've got a lot of work to do. And eventually, like I said, I'm gonna pull this motor out, repaint this entire engine bay, get everything really cleaned up, get it back in here and then enjoy this car for many years. But I am very excited about getting this car on the road because it's really, 
never been on the road since I've owned it. I've only gotten to drive it around just a little bit. And then I dove into doing the performance side of the motor. So with that said, guys, there's a lot to come on this car. I'll be jumping in and out of doing this project while doing a lot of my other stuff. But I want to see if I can get this done before the weather gets really nice so we, me and my wife can enjoy it. You guys have an awesome day, a blessed week, and I'll catch you on the next video.